Hey guys, and welcome to our very last episode of Band of Brothers. This is episode 10. It's called Points. We've made it to the end. We just have the documentary afterwards. I'm not sure whether I'm going to have that on the channel or if I'm just going to enjoy watching that by myself. Please let me know in the comments if that is something that you would be interested in and we can go from there. I'll definitely be watching it either way, but I am so, so excited to get to see this final episode. A huge thank you to everyone that's been here for this entire series. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your comments and kind words have meant so much to me. Also, you guys have been giving me lots more information as well. Always super appreciated. It's wonderful to get to know more, more details. So, and you guys are so smart. You know a lot of stuff. All right, guys, our final episode. Let's get watching. Part 10. Points. July 1945. Zell MC, Austria. Oh, that's beautiful. It was more than three years since Lewis Nixon and I decided to join the paratroops, and more than a year since we'd first gone to war. I certainly didn't expect to find myself at a place like this. Yeah, I heard reports about a red-headed Eskimo. <laughs> Come to join me for a morning swim? What is that? Ran into the regimental photographer. Said he had all these photographs of the 506th. Oh, wow. Going all the way back to Tekoa. <laughs> What do you think you'll do after this? I get some breakfast. <laughs> no, after, after. I had a meeting with Colonel Sink. He had discussed the possibility of uh, staying. Oh. In the army. Yeah, it was a career. That'd be wonderful for him. There's a company in uh, Nixon, New Jersey. It's called Nixon Nitration Works. Oh, sounds picturesque. <laughs> yeah, well, oddly enough, I know the owners. <laughs> Probably gonna expect me to make something of myself. I thought maybe I'd drag you with me. Are you offering me a job? <laughs> yeah, I'll think about it. I love that. It's a beautiful offer. Yeah, I, uh, I really appreciate it. I don't know if he will though. I think he may stay. Job offers, hard to fathom. I was still getting used to hot showers and morning swims. Getting back to some sort of normal. We'd entered Bavaria in early May with the hopes of capturing Birch's garden, and all the heads of the Third Reich had houses there. If you're looking for someone to find another way up that mountain, Easy Company is ready and willing. We're not sure what's up there. The Colonel doesn't want us taking any unnecessary risks. So the French are going to beat us to the Eagle's Nest. <laughs> Can't have that. Oh, look at that little beautiful nest of grenades. Woo. You fire up 2nd Battalion and outflank that French son of a bitch. <laughs> yes, sir. Very ominous. Have a bad feeling. Very. Not even any natives. We need to find some place we can put the Colonel. Oh. Oh. No, no. <laughs> wow. Look at this place. Wow. Oh, he's... I don't blame him. Kitty would love this. How many brides get a wedding present from Hitler? <laughs> you know, whoever comes in here after is gonna take whatever is nailed down. Wouldn't want that to happen. <laughs> I didn't think he would take anything. I just don't even think about it. <laughs> he's got plenty. Permission to climb the mountain, sir? Eagle's Nest? One battalion HQ, seal off the north side and prepare for prisoners. Nobody gets hurt, not now. Yes, exactly. Easy, you'll head up the mountain through the Ober Salzburg and take the Eagle's Nest. A mountaintop stone retreat, 8,000 feet up, accessible by a gold plated elevator. Whoa. It was one of the crown jewels of his empire, and the man was afraid of heights. <laughs> Place is stunning. Oh, here's to him. Oh. My goodness. Oh, imagine being here and looking at all of that. Wow. 
<laughs> hey, Adolf! I hope you don't mind. We, we made ourselves at home. Have a drink. <laughs> Just so as we can say we saw you do it. <laughs> Listen up. We all troops stand fast on present positions. You ready for it? Listen up. <laughs> German army surrendered. Whoa. I got a present for you. Come on. We discovered it yesterday. Had it on double guard ever since. I can vouch for that, sir. Ten thousand bottles of the world's finest liquor, wine, and champagne helped Easy Company mark the day the war in Europe came to an end. <laughs> take what you want and have each company take a truckload. Wow. Any bet 69 Rain though? In the morning, but don't feel you have to leave anything here for whoever comes next. Happy VE Day. Victory in Europe. Happy oh. VE Day. <laughs> yes. It's a good day for you, isn't it? Instead of an aggressive combat unit, we became an occupation force. And no one wanted to leave Birch's garden until they saw Austria. Wow. It's beautiful. It's incredible. So you reckon they'll make us run up those or ski down them? <laughs> Karahi. It's stunning. It's beautiful. I have goosebumps. I was just so, so happy. Goodness, it is absolutely magnificent. We'll be comfortable here. Comfortable. I wonder what will happen to us, to people like you and me, when there are finally no more wars to occupy us. Please accept this as my formal surrender, Major. It is better than to lay it on the desk of a clerk. You may keep your sidearm, Colonel. Combined Army and Marine Force mark the grim battlefield of Okinawa. Okinawa is the next big step towards victory over Japan. So, when are we going? We don't have a date yet. Are we gonna tell the men right away? Some of them will have enough points to go home instead. I think most of us here will have enough. And each of us will have to decide what to do. But I want those veterans who are staying, all new replacements ready to fight. That means daily close order drills, that means troop reviews, but above all, it means physical training. They're gonna love you. How about y'all just shut up, let Shift to kill us some dinner? Why don't we just shoot Bull here, feed the company for a week? <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Oh, God damn it, Shifty. You let him get away. Oh, I mean, ought to be glad to be rid of you. I wish, you know. Seems they want me to stay around a while. How many points you need? Fifteen. It's not easy to go home. General Taylor is aware that many veterans still do not have the 85 points required to be discharged. He has authorized the lottery to send one man home in each company. Oh, wow. Oh, Crazy wow. company. The winner is <gasps> serial number 1306-66266, Sergeant Daryl C. Powers. Yeah. That's how it's done, Shifty. Wow. General Taylor has also announced that the 101st Airborne Division will definitely be redeployed to the Pacific. Beginning tomorrow at 0600 hours, we will begin training to go to war. Again. I just wanted to um, say goodbye. He was, uh, well, it's been a long time. I gathered up my loot. Pistols, mainly. I even got my back pay in my pocket. Back home in Virginia. I just don't rightly know how I'm going to explain all this. I seen, I seen. You're a hell of a fine soldier, Shifty. There's nothing more to explain. Two days later, Shifty Powers was on a truck headed for the rear in a boat home. Unfortunately, the truck was hit head on by a drunken corporal from another regiment. Shifty had a broken pelvis, a broken arm, and a bad concussion. He survived, but had to spend the next few months in a series of hospitals. I wish I could say that he was our only casualty in Austria. Guts and Glory here applied for a transfer. 13th Airborne and heading out for the Pacific right away. Are you in on this too? I can't let him go by himself. He doesn't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving the men? Aren't they gorgeous? They don't need me anymore. Wounded in Normandy. 
in the leg, a minor flesh wound. Company E lost 24 men killed there. 17 of those were in my company commander's plane and went down on D-Day. So you were given command of the company on D-Day? Holland, uh, he bumped you to Battalion XO. Bastards took your company away. <laughs> oh, man. I fired my last shots there. Well, the whole damn war. You got through Baston without having to fire your weapon. That is correct, sir. Can't imagine a tougher test for a leader. You got through it. Why do you want to transfer? Looking to have your own division someday? No, sir. Not going to make a career in the Army? No. I, well, I, I don't know, sir. Because if you think you need more combat experience to get stars on your helmet, you've done enough. It's not my objective. Yes, exactly. That's not what he's after. Major, I took this meeting out of respect for your achievements and for the 101st. And frankly, I think you men have earned the right to keep you around. He's denying him. Thank you, sir. So I would stay in Austria for the time being. I'm trying to watch over soldiers who had no enemy to fight. One of those Polacks who was at the slave camp said this is where the guy lives right here. Which camp? Under direct orders and I'm happy to follow it. This is a mistake. Is this personal to you? No, it's a goddamn order. Does Major Winters know about this? No. Nope. Doesn't matter here. Oh, the fuck it doesn't. What if he's innocent? You know what? What if he's a fucking Nazi commandant of a fucking slave camp? Which one? You don't have any proof. Were you at Landsberg? You know I was. No, 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 no. This is bad. He's guilty. He probably is. Shut up, bitch. Shoot him. Shoot he him! Won't. He no. won't. Officers don't run. If the war's over, anybody would run. Wow. Oh! Oh no! Oh god! Oh Jesus. Oh no, 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 no. He was dead when they brought him in. 75 points. He was 10 points short. The enemy had surrendered, but somehow men were still dying. Young men who wanted to be home with their families by now were stuck here because they didn't have the points. What they did have plenty of were weapons, alcohol, and too much time on their hands. Very bad news. Wait. Oh. You okay, Matt? You need some help? They wouldn't give me any gas. <laughs> I think he was a major. Do you have any gas? Don't want to tell him no. Well, I, I guess I'll just use his jiba. Hold on a second now, right? <gasps> He's not gonna make it. You'd need a brain surgeon. I don't think there's any hope. You find the shooter, I want him alive. Come on, help me. What are you doing? We're gonna go find a brain surgeon. Bull, Malar, you each take a squad and one of these witnesses on a house-to-house -house search. Can we shoot this bastard on sight? Try and take him alive. Open up. Get in the jeep. Where are we going? To the hospital. Get in. If you want him to live, you'll help me. Mm. First, by putting that away. Oh. They found him? Beat me and him. Gonna go in there and join in? I should go in there and stop this. Where is he? How's Grant? Where is he? You okay? Where is he? I think he died. The guy in the hospital, he didn't make it. That's him? That's him. Where's the weapon? What weapon? Have the MPs take care of this piece of shit. Grant's dead? No. Crown surgeon says he's gonna make it. <gasps> That's a miracle. I'm guessing there were Hitler's photo albums, sir. So you looked at him, but you didn't take him? That's right, sir. You better not be lying to me. <laughs> he's smiling. Oh, sir, you make your decision yet? Yeah, I did. What's his decision? I know Easy Company's gonna need a commanding officer post-war. It better be somebody who knows what they're doing. So you've decided to stay in the Army? Yes, I'm gonna stay with the men. 
Well, I'm glad to hear it. So, some of us would stay by choice. But others were stuck here unless we could find excuses to send them away. So it's an airborne exhibition. They have one of every Allied combat plane they've used in the war. Uh-huh. You'll be like a technical advisor and make sure they get everything right. Wow. I understand, sir. I don't think we'll see you back here anytime soon. Wow. I won't let you down, sir. I love that. <laughs> That's so great. You've given me the choice as to where to reassign you, and I thought battalion headquarters might be a good place. I can think a few better, sir. Down at the airfield, there is a German general who was a little PO'd about having to surrender to Private Babe Heffron from South Philly. Things is beneath <laughs> his stature. I thought Second Lieutenant Carwood Lipton from West Virginia would soothe his ruffled feathers. I love Winters. Isn't he amazing? Isn't he amazing? With your permission, I would like to address my men briefly. He's Sobel. Captain Sobel. Major Winters. Captain Sobel. We salute the rank, not the man. <laughs> Love it. Man, uh, Man, it's been a long war. It's been a tough war. Ihr habt tapfer und stolz für euer Vaterland gekämpft. We fought bravely, proudly for your country. You are a special group. We found in one another a bond that exists only in combat. With our Kameraden. Among brothers, we've shared foxholes, held each other in dire moments. And gemeinsam gelitten haben. We've seen death and suffered together. I'm proud to have served with each and every one of you. You deserve long and happy lives in peace. Take a look at these two kids. What the hell happened to them? New Jersey, huh? Think about it. But Compton came back to see the company to let us know that he was all right. He became a prosecutor in Los Angeles. Wow. David Webster became a writer for the Saturday Evening Post and Wall Street Journal, and later wrote a book about sharks. He went out on the ocean alone and was never seen again. Oh, my God. Johnny Martin would return to his job at the railroad and then start his own construction company. George Luz became a handyman in Providence, Rhode Island. 1,600 people attended his funeral in 1998. Doc Rowe died in Louisiana in 1998. Frank Fricani returned to Chicago and worked a postal route as a mailman. Joe Liebgott returned to San Francisco and drove his cab. <laughs> Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. Alton Moore returned to Wyoming with a unique souvenir, Hitler's personal photo albums. <laughs> he, he was killed it. in a car accident Aww. in 1958. Floyd Talbert, we all lost touch with in civilian life until he showed up at a reunion just before his death in 1981. Ronald Spears stayed in the army. In 1958, returned to Germany as governor of Spandau Prison. Wow. He retired a lieutenant colonel. Yeah. Incredible. He's in company! School circle! For easy company, it was D-Day plus 434. Fast man would have had it, Perko. President Truman received the unconditional surrender from the Japanese. War's over. <laughs> Regardless of points, medals, or wounds, each man in the 101st Airborne would be going home. Each of us would be forever connected by our shared experience, and each would have to rejoin the world as best he could. Yes, that wouldn't be easy. Lewis Nixon had some tough times after the war. He was divorced a couple of times. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace, and everything came together for him. Oh, he spent Grace. the rest of his life with her, traveling the world. My friend Lou died in 1995. I took up his job offer and was a personnel manager at the Nixon Nitration Works until I was called back into service in 1950 to train officers and rangers. I chose not to go to Korea. I'd had enough of war. Yeah. <laughs> I stayed around Hershey, Pennsylvania, finally finding a little farm where I still live today. There is not a day that goes by that I do not think of the men I served with who never got to enjoy the world without war. A very unusual feeling. It's a very unusual happening. And it's a very unusual bonding. We knew that we could depend on each other. And so we were a, a close-knit group. I don't know anybody that I admire more than Bill Garnier and, and Joe Toy. They were 
very, very special. I'm just yes. one part of the big war, that's all. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Sometimes it makes me cry. The real men, the real heroes, are the fellows that are still buried over there and those that come home to be buried. And after the war was over and you came back out, you lost a lot of that. I lost all that confidence. We just hoping to stay alive, that's all. Yeah. We lucky few, we band of brothers. I cherish the memories of a question my grandson asked me the other day when he said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. But I served in a company of heroes. <laughs> that ending was honestly so much. just lost for words. I am so moved, just so moved to see those incredible, incredible, brave, amazing men, the band of brothers there. We got to see who was who and I did get some of them right. I picked Winters. <laughs> he was quite easy to to, to know <laughs> who he was oh my god and what he said to his grandson he served in a company of heroes absolutely beautiful I am so overwhelmed and so I am lost for words for just how incredible this this was it is a must watch experience for every generation. It's so important to keep all this alive and to never forget what these people have done. And if this is out there available for people to watch and enjoy and learn and grow from, then it is so necessary. Seeing the interviews with the real soldiers, the real men, the incredible heroes they are all heroes that was one of my favorite parts just to sit there and, and listen to them and hear their stories and i bet you they've got so many stories to tell they have seen so much suffered through so much and my goodness they are just incredible this episode was what I wanted it was what I wanted there was somewhat of a happy ending for a lot of them a lot of them they got to go home yes we lost so many along the way we lost so so many and we won't ever forget them but then so many of them did actually get to go home and that's just made me feel amazing getting to know that they went home and they continued their life and they had happy lives. They had a good life after that. And I think that would be so, so difficult to go back into society and to try and just be normal and try and live a normal life after everything that you've seen. It would not be easy and perhaps even sometimes impossible for so many. I think a lot of people would have suffered they probably wouldn't have been able to get over what happened and my heart goes out to them. I feel so honoured to have watched this. I feel so honoured that these incredible men shared something so personal to them and to so many. They probably wouldn't have shared those stories before. It would have been so hard for them to sit down and talk about what they've done but they did and I am so so proud of them. Thank you all so very much for being here and enjoying the series with me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am so grateful that you are here. Thank you. Until next time, have a wonderful day guys and I'll see you soon. Bye.